All right, so in this week's guitar lesson, you're gonna learn how to play a classic blues lead by yourself, no jam track is needed. And the way that you're able to do that is by highlighting chord tones. Even though there's no chords being played underneath you, we're gonna be talking about how to visualize those chords and then uh, highlight the notes inside those chords. Sometimes you're playing an arpeggio, sometimes you're just playing one of the notes, but that's what defines a lead like that and allows you to play it by yourself and have it make sense. It gives it context when you do it that way. So we're gonna break this down over the course of two videos. In this video, we're gonna go through the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, download the tablature and also access the on-screen tab viewer for this lesson. You can get those extra materials by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP535. Um, okay, so the song is in the key of A, and it's really a standard blues for the most part, 1-4-5 chord progression, with one exception. I'll explain that in just a second. So our one chord is an A, and then we go to a four chord, which is our D, it's actually a D9. I'll show you how to play that in just a minute. Five chord is an E. But there's this extra chord that you'll notice. I, I'm saying chords, we're actually not playing chords as we do this, but you'll hear that. You'll hear this one little highlight of a chord getting from the four chord back to the one chord. It goes like this. You got the four chord, then you have this chord. And then back to the one. Isn't that nice? I mean, that might be the big takeaway for a lot of you. What that is, is you, you got your four chord and then you're doing a sharp diminished seven. So it's whatever your four chord is, you play the sharp diminished seven which is a beautiful transition chord, creating a little extra amount of tension to resolve back to your one chord. And you hear that in more sophisticated sounding blues, more of like a jazzy blues. Um, so when I play it, I'm gonna go and play it like that, just the arpeggio. But if you noticed that when you heard the, the playthrough at the, end, uh, the beginning and you were like, wait, what's that little part? That's what that is, is that diminished seven uh, arpeggio. And so uh, let's listen to the first part of this and then we'll break it down. All right, so I started by just strumming the chord and I did that to define the where we are it's just to give you a little bit of a you know some parameter and so it also is helping to find the fact that the song is in a major key and the first point that i want to make is when you're playing in a major key and you're playing a lead you have the option of playing either major uh, pentatonic stuff or minor pentatonic if we're thinking pentatonics you can dial it in if you want it to be more blues like I did, that's what I played, was the minor pentatonic scale. If you want it to sound more happy or positive, you can play the major pentatonic scale. You can be in control and dial it in either way, or you can blend the two. You can play some notes from minor, some from major, and we're gonna do that here in just a minute. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to start by mentioning that. You have that option when you're playing in a major key. If the song is in a minor key, if I'd started with a minor chord, you don't have that option. You can only play minor pentatonic, if we're thinking pentatonics. Okay, so back to our uh, first chord. The first thing that I played, actually I didn't do a very good job of that. I played, uh, and I'm, I'm in the minor pentatonic scale, pattern one for the key of the song, which is A. So most of what we're gonna play is just right down that scale. So I'm starting on the fifth fret, second string, and then I come up to the eighth fret on that string, do a full bend with vibrato. Now that's a difficult thing to do. That took me a long time to do. You don't have to do the vibrato. You can just bend to the note. Um, it's really hard to do on this guitar even. The, the action on this guitar is very low and it's hard to do. My finger wants to slip off when I do that. So anyway, full bend on the eighth fret, second string, and then watch this. That's minor pentatonic scale. That's it, right down the scale. Then I came down to the um, seventh fret, fourth string and hit that twice, which is the A note. But what's nice about this, and what makes it sound so cool, is you're bending to this, this A note here, which is this note, that's the note you're bending to, and then you're hitting that same note on the fifth fret first string when you go down the, the lick. And then I ended with that, which again reiterates the fact that it's major by hitting that major third. So I'm barring the first three strings, playing strings two and three, 
and then I hammer on with my middle finger to the sixth fret third string. That gives me, that's really just your A chord, right? It's the top three strings out of your A chord, but you're hammering on into it. Okay, now the song goes to the four chord. Let's listen to that. So what I played was a D9 chord and I slid into it. And if you don't know how to do this, you've got to learn this. This will be something that, if you walk away with nothing else, you've got to get this because it's so essential to blues, this chord voicing. So what I'm playing is um, uh, basically, well, first of all, let me show you this little L shape. But basically when I'm playing my one chord, I'm thinking about this note on, on the fifth fret sixth string. That's my A note. It's inside the bar when I play that E shape. Okay, we can connect that. When I'm playing this note, or, or the four chord, I'm up on the fifth string. Still in the same fret though, fifth fret. So one chord, four chord. Now when I'm here, I have the option to play like that. So I put my middle finger there. Sorry, middle finger there on that fifth fret fifth string. I can play the seven chord or this nine chord. Or I could put my index finger there, same note, and then I can play the D chord using the A shape. Uh, either way, they're both D chords and they're both major, so they're gonna work. But I wanted you to just see the little pattern here. One chord, four chord, and then whatever you do for your four chord, you can always just slide up two frets and do the same thing for the five chord. So E chord or E9, I could do it that way. But I'm touching on that note. So you can see that L pattern. And I'll put a lesson up on the screen for those of you that are interested in learning more about that L pattern and want to do a deeper dive on it. Uh, anyway, so we slide into the four chord. I just wanted you to see that uh, where, where we are here. So my this shape here then is the same as your, it actually starts with this little triad, which is like my D7. So I'm thinking of the D7 down in, in first position. If you think of that shape, that little sort of triangle shape, you can play that same shape here, but this time your middle finger is on the fifth fret, fifth string. And that's your D7. Now, if I put my pinky down on the, the uh, fifth fret second string and add that note, now I've got a D9. And that's a, a little jazzier sound. You can also play the fifth fret first string. So you can hit strings one, two, and three there, which are just really a bar there. So that's that D9 sound. So you can slide into it. It's just a really cool chord because it's so slideable. And it's actually really easy to play. It's also easy to connect to your one chord. That's why I like it. One chord is here, four chord is here in terms of those root notes, right? Now the next thing that I played goes like this. Let's just get that first part. And what I'm doing is I'm walking right down, uh, really between the seventh fret and the fifth fret. Seven, five, we go down to the third string, seven, five. We go down to the fourth string, seven. So it's just right down the pattern there. But here's where that came from. I was thinking about, since we're playing over the four chord, right? We're playing over the D. I was thinking about the D chord here using the A shape. And when I play that, I've got one finger on the fifth fret, and then I've got this bar on the seventh fret. Fifth fret, seventh fret, right? So if I play the top three strings on the seventh fret with the D in the bass, I'm playing a D6 chord. This is stuff that I've talked about in other lessons. You just have to trust me on this. And if I slide that down two frets to my fifth fret with the D in the bass, I've got my D9. In fact, we just played that D9, right? There's the top three strings of it, right? It's just the triad. I know it's a minor triad, but inside of a six chord, inside of a nine chord is a minor triad. So, um, uh, so the reason I'm saying this is this little walk down was just walking down between the seventh fret and the fifth fret. And it was in my head, it was all part of this a chord shape. It's the D chord using that A shape. It basically allows me on those first three strings to walk between that seventh fret and fifth fret. I can do any variation of that, even play them um, as a chord like that, and it's gonna work. So I walked it down, and then I went like this. Now this gets it back into major. From here, we're gonna come down to the fourth fret, fourth string, back to the seventh fret, fourth string, and by hitting this note, I hit one of the notes 
from the major pentatonic scale. So all of this, had I gone like this, it would have been minor pentatonic, right? Right, but if I come down to here, it's major pentatonic, and look at this. Here's major pentatonic scale pattern one. There's that note. Do you see that? Major pentatonic scale pattern one. Slide everything up three frets, minor pentatonic scale pattern one, same shape. I can now go into my major just by sliding down and then back into my minor. So that's that's just how I think of it. That's, there's other ways you can think of this as a different scale and all kinds of different ways. But to me, hit it, coming down to that fourth fret four string, that's what's going on. I'm stepping over the fence into the major pentatonic scale, pattern one for that one note. And then I played this, strings two and three, uh, fifth fret, second string, sixth fret, third string. I slid into that. What is that? Well, you can tell the song went back to the A chord at that point. So I've just played two notes from the A chord, strings two and three. So. All right, so since we're back to the one chord, I came to strings two and three, and then I came to strings two and three on the seventh fret, and then play the chord again. But this time I'm playing strings uh, one, two, and three. It's the top part of my A shape. So it's... Now what is that? Why did that work over the one chord? Remember this, anytime you're hanging out on a chord for an extended period of time, you can go between the one chord and its four chord. So if you're playing an A, you can do that. It's a gospel kind of move. And so that's what, that, those two notes are just coming out of the D chord, which is a four chord, uh, out of that shape. Then play the full chord, and then I did a hammer on this time, barring the first two strings on the fifth fret, and a hammer on to the uh, seventh fret second string. So it's. And then I played this. Now you've heard this in other blues songs before. It's a little bit of a jazzy kind of vibe. It's super easy to integrate into your playing. Super easy. Because let's go back to our one chord, right? And all we're doing right now is we're still on the one chord. We're still on the A chord. So think of your A chord using the E shape. And then put your index finger on that fifth fret. That's where you would bar if you're barring and playing the E shape. And then let these three fingers make up that same D7 shape. We use this shape all the time. We're gonna play it right here now. So my ring finger is on the uh, seventh fret fourth string. And then, my, and then to conclude that, I put my index finger down on the fifth fret first string. But just connect that in your mind. Okay, there's my A chord, just A major. And then this, when I play it like that, is an A6 chord. And remember about the sixth chord, you can always take your sixth chord, slide it down two frets this direction, and you'll get the nine chord. We were just talking about that over the D chord. Remember I was saying, there's my D6, slide that down two frets, there's my D9. Same thing with this version of it. So I slid that down to get an A, go from an A6 to an A9. This is a real jazzy uh, sound easy to play that chord and easy to connect it to this E shape because it's like right there where that bar is is where you put your index finger So now the song goes back to the four chord, which is our D chord. And I was visualizing this, this D chord using the A shape, the top three strings of it though, actually the top two strings of it. So that top part of that, and that's where that first part came from. And then I went. Now this is just a blues kind of lick that you'll hear in the key of the song. And what gives it that sound is one note is minor pentatonic, this one. And then the one note is major pentatonic, which is the seventh fret, uh, second string. So that would be, so when you play them together, you have, and I love that sound. You hear that in a lot of old like jump blues and stuff. 
Especially when you push it sharp a little bit. Now after I played that, I went. So now we're going back between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. That should sound familiar. That's our D territory. There's a hammer on between the fifth fret and seventh fret on the first string. Slide up to the seventh fret, second string, seventh fret, third string, because I'm just playing that chord, right? The D chord, top part of the A shape. And then I came down here to the uh, fifth fret, third string to play that note, which is my seven. It gives it the D seven sound, right? Because that's my flat seven. All right, so now's where the song goes to that diminished chord that I talked about. That sound. There's how you make the chord. I'll put that up on the screen. That's what the chord looks like. And that's the, whatever your four chord is, you play the four sharp diminished seven. And you can always take that chord, slide it up one, two, three frets. It's the same chord. One, two, three frets. Same chord, same four notes. They just keep getting rearranged. Same goes with this direction. Um, so in actual fact, there's only uh, three diminished chords when you think of it that way. Uh, three options. Um, okay, now the, the arpeggio for this, if that's my D uh, sharp diminished seven chord, where my index finger is on the fourth fret fourth string, I want you to look at this pattern here. Fourth fret to the seventh fret on the fourth string, and then we're gonna come up to the third string and play on the fifth fret. So we have... Then after that, we're going to come up to the second string and play four, seven again. So look at that. Now from here, we're going to go to the fifth fret first string. And then you, if you wanted to play the next note, it would be up here on the eighth fret first string. So you have. Now remember, I said you can take that diminished seven chord and you can slide it up three frets and it's the same chord. Same is true with the arpeggio. Right, so, you, so I could do that all over the fretboard as well. When I realized that, it blew my mind. It kind of opened up the diminished arpeggio sound uh, because it, it made it so accessible. But just learn it in one spot like this. This is a good spot to learn it because when you make that chord where your index finger goes down, you can let that be the start of that arpeggio. That's just a very sort of simple way of thinking of it. So I played it like this, up to here. Now that was really all I played of the diminished seven arpeggio. And then I sort of jumped off that boat and went right back into like more like minor pentatonic scale. So, but I did half bend here, which gives us this note from our minor pentatonic scale. And then a little hammer on pull off. This is between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. There's my hammer on, pull off, seventh fret, second string, back to my fifth fret, first string. And then I came up to this note, which is the third interval of my one chord. So you can hear it transitioned to the one chord from that one note, listen. You can hear it right there. It goes, it resolves nicely to the, and that's the third interval of my one chord, of my A. And then I slid up here to the 12th fret first string, which would be like the fifth interval of my A chord as well. Or you could think pentatonics. Major pentatonic scale pattern four. You can see those two notes there. Okay, I'm gonna end the part one video right there. That's a lot of information. Come join us in the second half at Active Melody where we'll go over uh, you know, the rest of this lead. You'll also have access to the tablature and also the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive. You can highlight sections and slow down the playback and loop things and all of that if that's your style of learning. All right, we'll see you in part two.